The city of Milwaukee has many haunted locations. One of the most popular locations is Shaker's Cigar Bar, located at 422 South 2nd Street. Here they've been claimed as one of the top five most haunted bars in America. Shaker's was built over a cemetery in 1894, and as expected has had several recurring ghostly encounters that many don't have an explanation for, which makes this episode of Milwaukee's Most Haunted. My proudest accomplishment is the fact that first we've been here for 35 years, but my intent when I came out of Chicago was to shake up the local food and beverage scene. We certainly have done that. Uh, nobody had any inclination back at that time that uh, the entire haunty aspect was going to become anything whatsoever or that we would become this stalwart on the Milwaukee scene and just really an entertainment venue as much as we are a bar and restaurant. When the bar opened up in 1924, this is the speakeasy for the Capone family. So it wasn't just this beautiful bar here, they had a false wall, they had the brothels on the second and third floor. Brothels remained until 1946, which is well past prohibition, but obviously a lucrative uh, business model. So we also cover the Horning 20s tours on our tours for Hangman Tours, and those are centered around the original brothels in Milwaukee by City Hall. The transition took place in 1910, the socials came to power, they shut down the brothels, and all the brothels came down to Walker's Point. Here we are, ground zero. So, uh, things that have changed here, obviously we've got a very vibrant, very, very busy bar that goes on, a very busy food program that goes on, so it's not just the back bar, it's also the front bar. Um, the brothels are gone, but uh, they've been supplanted by the tour business, so we cover literally three centuries and four floors, from our cellar to the, uh, the very A suite upstairs, the dead hooker's bedroom. We found the remains of one of the young ladies who worked upstairs as a hospitality worker. And, um, you know, how things have changed. I mean, we are a very interesting dynamic here because we are a cigar bar. We have an award-winning food program. And then we've got the tours that are known nationally. So we've got different, different groups that come through for different things, and yet it's all rather homogenous. They all get along nicely. And it adds so much to the vibe that's here. And uh, as opposed to, again, a lot of what you get in Milwaukee, which is kind of one-dimensional, you know, here's your deep fried courage or something like that, we've got a lot going on. We have no monitors, right? So there's no television, no distraction, anything like that. And it forces people to interact and communicate, which I think is a precious commodity today. There's no question that the building is haunted. So we are, have long considered one of the five most haunted bars in the country by any number of rating services. Uh, we, you will find all sorts of things on us on A&E, Discovery, Travel Channel, or whatever the case might be, Netflix certainly. Um, so it appeals enough to those people that are in the business professionally that come here to use us for a location or do stories on us. I have had experiences on a daily basis and that could be something as simple as working on my laptop up front and constantly seeing something out of the corner of my eye and seeing reflections in the mirror. Um, to sensing things downstairs, the dramatic shifts in temperature, uh, this sense of dread that comes across you from time to time, uh, people getting scratched. I've gotten scratched on a tour. That doesn't happen much because we have generally benign resident spirits here. But all the tour guides have their own stories about different things that take place here. The deep clouds that take over so you can't see anything here. Uh, these massive shifts in smell that come up like a bad day in New Orleans where it's just like raw sewage or the south of France. Um, any number of those things take place on a regular basis and then you've just got something tapping you on the shoulder, you've got something pulling your hair. Um, there's no doubt whatsoever that you are not alone here. Having an experience with a ghost can be overwhelming and exhausting. Shakers offers food in a full bar full of exotic spirits and specially crafted cuisines to relax and take in the unique atmosphere Shakers has to offer. Hi guys, I'm Michaela. I'm a bartender here at Shakers and I'm going to make a couple of cocktails for you today. First up, we're going to make a Sazerac, which is a traditional New Orleans style cocktail. I had a passion for this cocktail for quite a while, but then recently I just went down to New Orleans where the birthplace of this beautiful drink was. Um, the Sazerac Room in the Roosevelt Hotel and um, we tried it out there and I was impressed but I also feel like I've added a couple of twists and put some love into it so it tastes really great here. So let's get started. We're going to start with some herb sant. It's a um, 
spirit that was actually made in New Orleans during the Prohibition era when actual absinthe was outlawed. Um, so you're just gonna pour a little bit into the bottom of your cup and you're gonna do what we call a rinse with that. So you're gonna rinse it around the cup, making sure the whole cup is coated with it. And I actually like to dump, dump the excess right into our shaker. Then we're gonna go in with two ounces of rye into your shaker as well. I add a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. I grab two slices of lemon and squeeze that right in there as well. As well as a couple small pulls of simple syrup. We then add ice to the shaker. And we shake it for about eight seconds. And then we're gonna strain it into the glass here. And then I like to top it with the shelled bitters. Some people shake this right in, but I prefer it in on top. It looks really pretty when it floats on top and it doesn't overpower all the other flavors when it's done this way. So you just dance it along the top there. And then you rim the glass with a lemon peel. Twist it up. And put it right in. And there's that, the Sazerac. Shakers has haunted tours that they offer that take you on a journey of the bar and its history. The tour leads you into one of the most haunted places in America, the basement. This is where the most deaths and ghostly activity has occurred. The key talking points that I do when I'm working here at Shakers is to let people understand that these aren't just things that we are introducing them to. They're actual personalities. These people actually lived and they still go on in some sort of fashion. And just because we can't see them bodily doesn't mean that they don't have feelings, they don't have moods, they don't have desires still left in life. For example, Molly, our resident spirit on the top floor who was murdered by her lover. She has said that she doesn't want to leave because she's still in love with Sam. Sam is a bouncer that worked here during the Al Capone era. And Sam feels that he can't move on because he's afraid he's going to be judged for what he did uh, for Mr. Capone. Molly doesn't want to leave Sam because she loves him. So that's one of the reasons why she stays. Our standard Shaker's Ghost Tour is, you know, a little bit of everything. There's kind of something for everyone if you do the tour. Some people are really interested in you know, the building itself and the building's history. Some people just really like the architecture. Some people want to hear about the ghosts. And some people have done the tour five times already and they just want to hear about the things that I experience. I'll talk about the building, I'll talk about the history, I'll talk about our resident spirits, and then I'll throw some of my own stories in there too. All depends on you know the vibe of the group and you know, read your group, read your tour. The most exciting part of the tours that I give, I feel like, is sharing the history with people who are clueless to it when they walk in. They don't know anything about the haunted part of it, the ghost part of it, or even just the actual like history of the timeline, when the building was built, who all came through here, who owned it, what happened here. Because so many people think like, oh, it's a haunted house type thing, but it's not. I was training a tour guide at one point and we heard some tapping in the basement. And then as we moved through the floors, I continued to hear the tapping follow us all the way to the top floor. And finally, I couldn't stop it anymore. I said, stop, whoever's doing the tapping, I need you to understand we don't want you on this floor. You need to go back to the basement where you belong and there is nothing interesting going on. When I said that, this spirit almost kind of gave a huff sound that we hear like and the person I was giving the training to actually felt something brush behind her and we heard footsteps go down the stairs. I think the tours are so popular because it's not something that you can really get anywhere else especially our Coombe City Cannibal tour. I believe they're the only Jeffrey Dahmer tour that I know about 
So, especially people who are from Milwaukee, they'll come on that tour and say things like, my uncle used to work at Ambrosia with Jeffrey Dahmer and will take you to some of those spots where he picked up some of his victims. And it's really such an experience that you're not going to be able to find other places. And that goes for the regular Shakers Ghost Tour as well. Um, there's no jump scares, there's no fake things, there's no fake ghosts. Everyone's like, when, when, when are we gonna see the ghosts? I can't control when you see supernatural things happen, um, but it's exciting that we just provide the information to people who are quite honestly clueless of what like has gone on here and it's really cool to talk about the history of the 1920s through here and the history before this building was ever even built. Like most people don't know about one of the original cemeteries um, in the state that was right here where we're sitting right now. The first few times it happens you don't believe it's really happening. After a while you tend to accept it as real and if you knew my background, I grew up in a haunted house and lived next to a cemetery. So as a small child, I accepted a lot of things that most people would not accept. I say it on the tour. Some people ask if the tour is scary. I say it all depends on what you're afraid of, especially when I'm in the cellar. You know, some people are afraid of the dark. Some people are afraid of basements. Some people are afraid of ghosts. My favorite people on the tours are the skeptics because I get a chance to truthfully tell them what I've seen and heard and if they are lucky enough to get on our 2.0 tour, which involves uh, the divining rods, where they actually use the rods themselves and they speak to the spirits themselves, they realize, oh, there's something here I can't explain. And hopefully that's gonna open up their mind to a whole different reality, which we already know exists. It's not necessarily me being afraid of spirits or what I'm gonna see, it's just the anticipation. You know, when am I gonna see it? especially if I'm downstairs getting ice alone, always in the corner of my eye, I just, maybe 10 times that I'm getting ice, just, it's not the expectation that you're gonna see something, it's just the energy that overflows your body. I have seen one of our spirits show up downstairs, I've used the dividing rods to kind of confirm if that was him or not. We confirmed yes. Now some people say, maybe that was your eye playing tricks on you, but also, maybe it wasn't. I think that whenever you are in an older building, you need to let your mind relax. And if you have an inkling like, I feel like there's someone with me, most likely there is. Realize that we are surrounded by things that we don't see, but we definitely can feel. Showing off the full bar and not your everyday spirits, Michaela shows us her specially crafted and local favorite brandy old fashioned sweet. Another cocktail that's super popular here at Shakers and in the Wisconsin itself is the Old Fashioned. We do it a little different up here in the Midwest than some places in the country where we actually mix a little bit more into it than just the classic Old Fashioned. So I'm going to show you the Wisconsin style Old Fashioned today. You're going to get your rocks glass and you're going to add a sugar cube, a cherry, and a lemon, or I mean an orange slice. I add a couple of dashes of maraschino cherry juice because we're going to make a brandy old fashioned sweet here. And I'm going to add a few dashes of bitters as well. You're going to grab your handy dandy muddler and you're going to muddle all those ingredients in. You have to really make sure you get the orange rind muddled as that's where a lot of the flavors come from and those oils need to get into the drink as well. Fill the cup with ice. And then over the top you add two ounces of your liquor, which in this case is brandy for this old fashioned. And then we just top it with um, lemon lime soda. We are using Sprite here. And there we are. It's a pretty quick and easy cocktail, but it's super popular and super delicious. Top it with some cherries and you're all set. That's it. With the high amount of paranormal activity occurring here at Shakers, paranormal investigator Ron Helwick has been studying the supernatural and its natural environment since 2014. That's what we do is we always pray before we walk in. Uh, that's our preference. Everybody has their own preference spiritually. Uh, we, we, we do that before we even walk into a place. But even before that, we actually have uh, somebody that contacts the client and get a rundown about the place. 
that we have somebody do the research on the location, background or, or whatnot on the address. And then we go in and we actually do baselines and figure out what it could be. And then we plan a different day then to come in and do the actual investigation. We use a couple different things. We use a, a thing called the SLS. Uh, basically what that is, is, is like the Xbox Connect piece. And basically what that does, it can map out spirits. We've actually brought it downstairs in the basement and actually we're able to prove that there was uh, possibly bodies in the floor, in the basement floor, that we used to, uh, to identify those. But we also use voice recorders, we use infrared cameras, we use a lot of different types of tools. EMF detectors, EMF stands for electromagnetic fields. Spirits are, usually use a lot of different types of electricity, energy to manifest themselves. And so we need those types of devices to find them. I remember one time when we were showing up here during the day, we actually saw a woman twirling in the window in a white dress, this big, beautiful, like, bell-type white dress twirling in the window. And uh, the, skeptics, the skeptics we are, we went ahead and tried to debunk it, maybe off a window across the street or whatever, we couldn't. But uh, it was, uh, that, was, that was a crazy sight. One thing about Shakers is that there's, there's layers upon layers of things. So there's always something going on spiritually here. Uh, it's never a dull moment for us. Things always happen. Uh, a lot of times we'll go home and find even more stuff, you know, through our audio, because uh, EVPs, which stands for electronic voice phenomena, it doesn't get heard by the human ear, but it'll be heard through audio. Uh, and then you also have like the SB7, which is a spirit box, that basically scans through frequencies of a radio, and then spirits are able to speak in between the frequencies. It's really amazing. A prohibition influence cocktail is next with Michaela at the Shaker's front bar. So our last cocktail that I'm making for us is called the Mary Pickford. It's served in a martini glass and it's super pretty pink in color when we're done with it. It's a nice fruity cocktail that is rum based and it's really great in the spring and summertime. Um, at Shaker's here we love to ha have products that are hard to find or not many people know about but are truly beautiful. This rum from Madagascar is one of those. They have some of the best vanilla orchids in the world. And this vanilla rum really features them very nicely. So we're gonna use this in the cocktail today. Um, so you're gonna put two ounces into the shaker here. You're gonna squeeze a couple of lime wedges in there. I like to use two. And then we a few more pulls of grenadine into here to give it that nice pink color. And we top that with some pineapple juice, freshly shaken, of course. You add some ice to your shaker, and once again, we shake it for about eight seconds. Any longer in the ice in the shaker starts to break down that cocktail and ruin what you have built in there. your glass. You can see this beautiful pink color. Perfect for summertime. And we're going to garnish it with a lime and a cherry. And here we are, the Mary Pickford. Drinks aren't the only thing that Shakers serves. Bob has an authentic Cajun dish that uses a secret recipe of blended spices to create an outstanding dish. Folks, welcome home. Here we are at the Mighty Shakers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm going to do one of our most popular dishes, which is a Cajun garlic shrimp. Now, uh, this cannot be really simpler than it is. A simple pan, I'm doing this on an induction burner right now. A little bit of butter. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I've got some garlic cloves over here. If you smash them, they're gonna be much sweeter, yet still garlic than if you just were to cut them first. A little enzyme that plays right there. That's just gonna go there and start off. So we've got the garlic and we've got the butter, Cajun garlic shrimp. A little bit of olive oil going as well. You can let this get to speed in just a moment. A little black peppercorn. A touch of salt. Generally I salt things in the back side, but I just want to get a little bit of the flavors moving right now. We have a Cajun blend that we make ourselves in house. And we can attach a recipe at some point if that's required, but it's uh, primarily 
granulated garlic and it's um, paprika and it's cayenne chili pepper and a few other things like that. So as you can see now we're getting to the speed, got a nice little bubble action taking place. We've taken our shrimp and these are U10 shrimp. So right before this we peeled them and we did a slip down the back side to clean them out, get the sand vein out. And rather than just toss the shrimp in, I like to move it around a little bit so we got a good sampling of all those great flavors that are taking place there. So I'm starting this on high, but as soon as the shrimp are in, I'm gonna back it down a little bit. And you see, I like to play the radius of the pan as well. The shrimp will naturally turn over by themselves once the protein start to seize up. But I like to start them in the center so you get some of the flavors that work themselves in the center of the shrimp so you have a full flavor profile taking place. This is a standard banana chili pepper, a little bit bruised. I'm not at all opposed to using imperfect fruits and vegetables. And I think that uh, we really should have a kind of a comeuppance in our country about how we perceive things. So banana chili, and we're just doing some coarse cuts on this, nothing special, a little onion as well. Serrano chili peppers. Simple little slice and dice kind of action. Now I've got some uh, pomodoro here. So we have a uh, tomato product that is lightly seasoned. In a separate pan, pan, I'm gonna have some uh, duck fat. You can use any type of uh, oil or fat you like to use. Olive oil is fine, butter is fine, whatever. I happen to like the depth of flavors that take place with the duck fat. And then I've just taken some red cabbage and a little bit of carrot and uh, slice that up and that's just in there as well. This whole dish just takes a few short minutes. So now that we have all the other components in there, we're gonna increase the temperature again. Turn these over. In a separate pan, I'm gonna do some blue crab claws. So these are swimming blue crab claws and they're from, of all places, Colombia. garlic and a little more butter. Butter and crab work so nicely together. Take a little bit of a remoulade here and remoulade very simply is a combination of Dijon mustard and mayonnaise. You do a little pattern or something, a little squiggly type thing if you like on there. We make a crack sauce in house, which is developed from several types of chilies and some garlic. And it's an Austin style chili sauce and it's just great flavors going on with it. So again, we just cook these for a few quick minutes. And there's a variety of ways to present these. You could do these as a little halo that goes all the way around this circle of the crack sauce and the remoulade. You could do these so it actually looks like a crab that's uh, crawling. Let your imagination work for you. We take our garlic and put that right in our center. Roast garlic has a great flavor to it. And just a little drip of our melted butter here to go over the top of this dish. Salt and pepper. And we have crab claws. Now our shrimp are almost done. Heat off. Beautiful red cabbage in the duck fat. It's a shame you can't smell this because it really smells sublime. And even if you don't like cabbage or you don't think you like cabbage, you do your cabbage this way. You saute it off in duck fat, a little bit of carrot, any kind of set flavoring or seasonings you want. It is just a dynamic presentation. So our shrimp are done. This is often served with red beans and rice. Mighty nice, those red beans and rice. 
and we're going to take this portion, this yummy love thing right here, which is just the, the chili peppers, that little bit of tomato, and the onion. Again, a little S&P. And this is our Cajun garlic shrimp at Shakers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. I think uh, it's important that people realize that we are not a haunted house and people aren't jumping out at you and nothing is contrived and it's, it's not a Disney thing where at 7.15 this will happen over here. The spirits have their own vibe going on. They got their own time frame and they've been here way before we've been here. And we consider ourselves you know, more to be stewards of the property as opposed to, you know, I own them. We coexist with them. We've got a great thing going on. Um, it seems that they really are showmen as well and like the attention. But when you come here, um, you know, the mission is not to scare you because it's, if anything else, just to open your mind to things. And I think we accomplished that on a couple different levels of strata, both with the foods, with, with the offerings for, you know, spirits, for cocktails, and then of course with the ghosts. So I think we get that knocked out. And I think there's a reason why we get people from all over the country and beyond that come here because we are, we are real unique and real legit at the same time.